Hello there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonian back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, today I'm actually going to be talking about some of my bigger plants that I'm going to prepare to get outside for the coming summer. And we will pop one of them on, uh, one that I want to grow on a bit bigger. And also have a look at a plant that we cut back last autumn. So let's get on it. Hello there, well it's very good to see you again. Uh, the more astute of you will note that I've actually got the whitewash on the glass house now. Today I want to talk purely about some of my larger plants and I think there is nothing better than seeing a really big pelagonium in a really big pot grown very large. Now if you cast your mind back to last September and I will put a link up to it here um, you will see me cutting back my large copthorn and that was cut back really hard. You basically have to do that in order to, to make space in order to get them through the winter. But this now has grown on hugely. So let's just have a look at it. That was cut back, nothing more was done to it. And here it is. <laughs> yeah, it's got pretty big. So there is, this is copthorn, and it has got huge, it's just throwing bud to start flowering. Now, this is in a really huge pot, I think it's in a 14 inch pot. Now in the UK, we've been going through quite a, a warmish spell of weather actually at the moment. It's a little bit showery today, so that it's been a bit on and off, but during, I'm putting this outside now to acclimatise during the day, bringing it back in at night because the nights are still a little bit chilly uh, on milder nights I may leave it out but um, I'm just starting the acclimatization process now but this copthorn has behaved very well but the key with it through the winter is keeping it virtually bone dry I've only watered this about once every three or four weeks during the winter um, and it's it continued to burst through and grow. Certainly initially after that video last year in September, it virtually got no watering at all, maybe once a month. And it's as the as the winter really set in, I didn't water it any more than about once a month really. Uh, and it continued to grow and thrive. But the good ones are potting up uh, and making really good statuesque plants of uh, the, the big decorative regals, some of the larger scenteds, uh, the uniques, anything that's pretty strong growing. This is copthorn and a really quite large bloom, which is really quite striking when it's particularly, when it's fully covered, can put on a fantastic display. So this one is just the acclimatization process now. Also, maybe don't go sticking them in masses of direct sunlight because if you're behind glass, um, glass does cut out some of the UV light that can get to the leaves. So when you first put them outside, that strong full UV spectrum can often, you know, burn those leaves. So you do need to be a little bit careful when getting them used to that, that sort of outside condition. Now, the key thing about taking these through the summer, of course, is ensuring that you're giving them a full strength feed, probably every other watering. This will not get watered more than probably twice a week, even during the height of the summer. Um, obviously, in the when we get to the summer, I'll be talking about the fact that when we get very warm weather, the pellies can go into sort of a, a little bit of a winter mode where they don't always need a lot of uh, watering anyway. So you do need to be a little bit careful, but twice a week for this big plant will probably be more than enough. It's in a very well-drained compost, um, which moves us perfectly on to potting on a plant that I'm going to get into a bigger pot and uh, we'll, we'll go through that process now. So I'm going to park this large copthorn for the time being. Right, so what I'm looking to put on is this atomic snowflake. 
I know that Fibrex have actually got a really large version of this. And it was that large plant of theirs which really made me want to get going on one of these. So I got hold of one of these from the nursery last year uh, and have grown it on. But it, it's sort of outgrown this pot now. Now, the thing to always remember with pelagoniums is that they do not like being over potted. But if you want to go for it a bit, and I'm going to go for it a bit with this one. I haven't actually bought the pot in yet. Uh, I haven't revealed the pot that I'm going to get it into. Uh, at the moment, it's in about a, that's about an eight inch pot, but I want to get it up straight up to a 12. I think it's maybe even bigger, actually. We'll have a look in a second. But the key thing with doing any kind of over potting, which I wouldn't recommend for pelagonium, certainly not in a glass house, never over pot in a glass house, once you over pot, as I'm going to do probably in this case, you just need to go very, very, very careful with the watering. Just go very easy with it. You don't need uh, to give them a lot of water in the sort of first couple of months really of the plant being in its new pot uh, because you don't want the root ball just sat in a load of really damp compost because that's the sure way to sort of kill it. So, you know, you just need to be very, very careful. Right, so here we go then. We're going to get it up into this big boy here. Now, this is a really big pot and I think this will look really nice in this, this large cone pot that I've got here, which measures probably or at least 14 inches across, but it's a bit dumpy. So it's not like a full 14 inch pot equivalent to that sort of shape. And we'll get a, a bit of crockery in the bottom and get some compost in here. I'll just empty this into it initially. And then I'll bring the camera over. I'm just sort of putting a fair bit in the base. Right, so I'm just gonna close up a bit now so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Right, so you can see I've just put enough compost in there just to raise it up so that I can sit the root ball on the top of that uh, to get about the level that I'm uh, wanting to get to for the base of the plant, of course. Right, so the first thing I wanna do is knock this out of here and I need a bit of bucket help here. Let's take the label out first thing. There we go, Atomic Snowflake. Love the name, Atomic Snowflake. That's grand, isn't it? There we are. And look at that for a root ball. If that isn't a clean root ball, no mealy bug or anything like that, clean as a whistle, kept fairly dry, I will take because that was a clay pot, always a little bit of um, old crockery pot in the base, which I can't get the old bit out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Found it in the end. Just break off some of this little bottom root. So there we are. And now I'm just going to sit that in there like that. And that's the perfect height for that, like thus. Right, so I've sat there, there in the middle. It's just a question now of back filling. Uh, I can get rid of that bucket. Now with this mix, I have got, it's about a third drainage material. Um, I like to give my pelagoniums a lot of drainage material, particularly on plants that I'm initially over potting. Um, that's quite important. But you can already see it's not looking monstrously out of place actually already. Uh, it was very much ready for a pot on this plant. But this is going to be quite big. But as I said, it's now only going to get a very, very light water. Because you do not want to be over watering this for the first couple of months that it's going to be in this pot particularly as you know the weather's still relatively cool 
Um, so yeah, it applies really for everything. Um, I do suggest this. I've already done a, um, well, as of the time of filming this, I've actually already done a video on putting up a, a basket. You may or may not have already seen that. I am, one of the problems is the processing of them. And <laughs> we have to see how the timing goes. You may have already seen that. I don't know. Um, I can't think of how the, uh, the videos may go out. But if you have, you'll, you'll note that I already comment on the fact that when you're sort of very much putting a lot of plants into a lot of compost, or pelagonium specifically, of course, you really do need to be careful of the watering. I think we're virtually done. Just sort of firming this down all around it. This plant, of course, is bending marginally that way because it's been very much one-sided. In the, uh, the greenhouse, it's just been thrown down on the side, on the bottom underneath a bench. So it's not at a monumental amount of light. I will now slowly begin the uh, acclimatisation process of, of this plant. And there we are. I think we're, we're virtually done with that. All I will do now is just update the label. I always put the dates that I do it. It was put into the previous pot on the 10th of July last year. So virtually in the middle of the summer, but I'm doing this quite early now with this one. Atomic Snowflake. And there we are, that, that's it really. Uh, I'm going to give it a very light watering, which I will show you now. I will go and get the water, if you just bear with. Right, so I've just got some water. It's just a question of a little bit of dampness around the base of the plant. Nothing more. This is about half full. So what's this? This is a two litre, so it's about a litre of water, um, you know, not much. Plain water, there's a lot of goodness in the compost for the first month or two. That'll do, that's more than enough. Now you could argue as well that we got one or two slightly wayward stems that I could give a trim back to, but I don't think, I, I mean, they're throwing bloom, so I'm probably going to leave it for now. If I get some that are very wayward and start flopping about all over the place, I might trim them off. But in general, I'll probably in the summer use a high potash feed on this to, to keep them firm. Potash firms up the pelagoniums, makes the stems strong and gives them strength to be able to withhold the body of the plant. So I will leave these for now, get some bloom off them, just enjoy them as, the, uh, as I get them outside just to start the acclimatisation process that I spoke about earlier. That in the end of the summer can be easily cut back to get through the winter. Um, so there we go, that one's done. Um, I've got plenty of other videos either done or upcoming. There's a lot going on obviously this time of year. So if you're not subscribed and have just passed along, click the subscribe button, maybe put the notifications on as well so you get um, notified of when a new video is up and coming and just released. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're regular, I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.